Welcome to the Confident Retirement Podcast. Is doing the most important things alone a good idea? How comfy are you with your choices when it comes to life's biggest decisions? What is real peace of mind with financial confidence and how can you get it? Chris Fleming and Mark Peachy are the founders of LPF Advisors in Sarasota, Florida. On the show, they bring together the best and brightest minds to share with you how to have a more confident financial picture. They empower listeners with simple, common sense and financial wisdom. And now, here are your hosts from LPF Advisors. All right, I want to welcome everybody to the Confident Retirement Podcast brought to you by LPF Advisors. I am your host here as always, Chris Flaming. Same seat, same background. And today I have the honor of welcoming Sonia Rosa, CPA, to the show. Her tax planning practice based in Tampa, Florida area is dedicated to helping small businesses with their accounting and tax planning needs through the creation of a clear roadmap to achieve exponential results. Sonia, thanks for being here and welcome to the show. Oh, hi, Chris. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, we're going to have some fun. Yes. Yes. (laughs) I'm sure you have an interesting history. So I'm hoping you can kind of take me through what led you to opening up your own practice. Yes, sure. Love to share. Well, I worked for close to 20 years in within public and corporate. I did a lot with home care. I still do, actually. And, you know, one day I was just basically doing mostly tax prep on the side uh, during tax season. And then it kind of snowballed. And then later I said, well, why not do this on a bigger scale? And that's when it all started. I was about 2016. And here I am almost six years later. Okay. And tell me just a little bit about your practice on a high level, kind of what you specialize in, what your main functions are in working with people. Yes. um, Mostly I focus on CFO services for small businesses, but of course, not not every small business is up to that level. So then some of my clients, I just do their accounting. Some of the others, I just do their taxes and tax planning. Some of them, I do both. So it's a combination. And then, of course, there are some individuals that they just come their once a year tax return. Okay. So in starting your business in 2016, is there something that you wish you knew back then that you know now? That I wish I knew back then. Yeah. So if you could go back in time and to when yeah. you started and tell that person something, uh, what would it be? Just be yourself. Don't try to do what everybody else is doing. And especially don't follow cookie cutter programs. Okay. And like so elaborate on that a little bit. What, uh, what about the cookie cutter? What is it that, about that that is challenging? Well, it is challenging because it's not authentic, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And I see it works for some people very well. They're very successful. But unfortunately, it doesn't, it has not worked for me. Mm-hmm. And is, is there something that you like best about your business right now? I like the flexibility. Okay. Personal? Uh, both personal and, you know, to pick and choose who I want to work with. Because, you know, for example, when you're in public accounting, you don't have a choice who your clients are. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. Right. And they assign them to you unless you're a partner and then you can push them off to somebody else. But I was not a partner where I work. And so I do like that. that, that flexibility with schedule you know, be able to be there more for my family and then also to be able to to have good fit clients. I love my clients. <laughs> yeah, life's too short. And you need to have that work-life balance there. That's really important. Yes. So are there some areas of your practice that you get the most enjoyment out of? Some specific things that you do with clients that you really like? Yeah, I really enjoy the CFO part because, you know, it involves a lot of communication with the owner and do strategic planning and all that good stuff. And also the tax planning, 
with the small businesses because you know they work right. really hard so they okay. want to keep the most of their money <laughs> right yeah um, pay, pay the least amount in taxes in a legal way <laughs> What would be a common CFO type duty that you would assist with? Uh, for example, financing. When they're seeking some type of financing or they're going to get into, let's say, a new program, or new service, like right. weighing the pros and cons and if it's cost beneficial. And then once they get into it, let's see how it's doing. Is it profitable? Or I really do enjoy this strategic part. And are there some overlooked areas or blind spots that business owners typically, you know, don't see when you're working with them? That they don't see. I mean, a lot of time they get so wrapped up in the operation that they really push to the side, the financial side. And then they think it's okay. It's going to be fine. Yada, yada, yada. And then when they come to see, like, they're in a tangle web. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a and tangle th- web. And then, of course, then they're, oh, I wish I would have talked to somebody, you or whomever, long time ago. Yeah. Instead of waiting. And regret. That's such a, that can be such a, a tough thing for a business owner, you know, yes. saying, I wish that I would have done this sooner. So are there some unique challenges uh, that small businesses face when it comes to taxation or tax planning that aren't true of individual people? Uh, well, sometimes it's hard for them to follow the plan and then to get back with you in time if they, there needs some adjustment. Because like I said a few minutes ago, they get wrapped up in the operation, in the day-to-day of the business and growing it and all of that, which I completely understand because I have my practice, so I'm running my business. It's the same thing. (laughs) And you have to wear many hats. Yeah, you can relate. Yeah, because you're in the trenches with them. You're doing the same thing. Yeah, sometimes people don't realize it, but we, uh, you, financial planner, me, as CPA accountant, we're running a business too. Mm -hmm. So we have the same challenges. We got to run it. We got to do marketing. We got to to this, build contractors, employees, I mean, all that stuff as well. So without sharing any like personal details, can you think about one of your most satisfying client experiences where you help the small business owner uh, get from a position where maybe they needed a lot of improvement to a spot where they're in a really good place? There have been quite a few. And like I said, they start with a tangle web. Then we create the the roadmap or the steps, whatever you may want to call it. It mm-hmm. can be different names. And then, well, let's we're at this stage. And then let's move on to the next stage. And then until they feel they can breathe in. I mean, a lot better. So uh, you mentioned the roadmap. Are there some common steps in that roadmap for business owners that they have to, that they go through? Well, first is the gathering of information. And then, of course, it's a case by case because mm-hmm. every business is different. Then some might need more than the others. Yeah. I just, yeah. a lot of people call it a roadmap because it's, you know, you're trying to follow. Right. You're trying to follow a path. <laughs> Yeah. And for everybody, the path's a little bit different. Exactly. Everybody is different. And then this I I live in Florida, go from Florida to Atlanta, maybe doesn't require that much planning. But if I'm trying to go from Florida to Washington State, there's going to be a lot of road planning for that. Right. I like how you said that. That's a good analogy. So what would you say is your biggest life accomplishments so far, either personally or professionally? My biggest accomplishment is my daughter. (laughs) Okay. Tell me more about that. Yes. I had her very young and she's now a very well-rounded young adult. And she's not because she's my daughter, but you know, she's very, she's a very happy person She's accomplished and she's done a lot and very confident, very likable. 
I mean, so that's, that's my biggest pride and joy. That's perfect. And then I think any more saying that your adult children are out of the house and self-sufficient is an accomplishment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she came back for a bit, but right. of course, after they always college, do. Yeah. After college, she came back for a bit, but then about six months later, she took off again. <laughs> yeah, well, good for her. Um, yeah. Outside of your practice, is there anything that you're really passionate about personally that's really important to you? Outside of my practice, of course, well, my family, mm-hmm. and I like to volunteer in the community. I am part of Junior League, mm-hmm. which is, you, know, you must be familiar with it. Um, yeah, but for people that aren't, why don't you kind of explain what Junior League is? Yes, Junior League, it's a nonprofit organization. It's throughout United States and London and Mexico. And it's a very old organization, started in the early 1900s, and it's all women. And what it does is to promote volunteerism throughout the community and here in the Tampa Bay area they have a lot of different initiatives to help out the community uh, both the women and children yeah and they've done some amazing work yes they do so let's shift gears just a little bit what would you say is the most exciting part of your business right now what biggest opportunity that you see um, biggest opportunity I see that I started seeking recently is to work with startups. Mm. Again, Tampa Bay has become a big hub for startups and they need help. They need advice and they're very appreciative of it. And so that I think that's a big opportunity right there. Yeah. From the ground up, they need a lot of help. Yeah, they do. And yeah, they're doing really great things here. Well, and that's kind of the backbone of our economy, right? Is the small business. Exactly. As and you know, people, working. And people, all those people with fresh ideas, very innovate with a lot of innovation. And that's what we need. Mm-hmm. So on the flip side of that, Sonia, what do you think is your biggest challenge right now? Um, biggest obstacle, maybe in your in your business, something that you having a struggle with or, or you need to overcome? It's sometimes I, I think too much. <laughs> okay. Well, so what do you mean by that? Can you elaborate on that? Then sometimes like that kind of holds me back from approaching some businesses or even individuals. Cause I, sometimes I would think like, no, nah, they must know, or that, that I don't think they will be interested, but they do. Yeah. It's that self-talk, right? We yes. all have, yeah, that voice inside of us that's either positive or negative or agnostic about our abilities. Yes, it's hard, but I'm working on it. I have some good coaches and then that coaching, I'm working on that. Coaching helps a lot. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and some accountability. So if people wanted to learn more about you or your practice, or they wanted to contact you, to learn more about what's the best way for them to do that? Yes. The best way is through my website. Okay. And there they can schedule a call or send me an email is Sonia Rosa LLC.com. And Sonia is spelled S O N I A, not Y A, no J. (laughs) Okay. Perfect. And are you accepting uh, new relationships, new clients at the time right now? Yes, I am. Fantastic. So everyone, I want to encourage them to go to the website and check that out. Um, I've been there. There's a lot of good information and it's easy for to schedule a call or make an appointment on there. Sonia, I want to thank you for taking the time to be here with me today. It's been a real pleasure to interview you. And folks, we've been here with Sonia Rosa, CPA. And thank you all for listening and watching the Confident Retirement Podcast brought to you by LPF Advisors, where we are raising the retirement confidence of everyday people to another level, one show at a time. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Sonia. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, everybody. You've been listening to the Confident Retirement Podcast with Chris and Mark from LPF Advisors. For more information on them and retiring confidently, please visit lpfadvisors.com. If your ears are pleased and your mind is now at ease, do share the program with your friends 
and subscribe wherever podcasts are found.